Amid all that good news, I also suggest to you this morning that the 4,500 member employers of AIM face a crossroads in our effort to create economic opportunity in Massachusetts. It is a crossroads born of an increasingly volatile political environment that is shifting the ground under our feet almost daily and challenging all of us who run businesses to articulate a positive and compelling vision for the role we play in larger society. All you need to do is watch the chaotic 2016 presidential election. Can you take those pictures off there? I'm sorry, sorry. Um, all you need to do is watch the chaotic 2016 presidential election to sense a growing distrust among Americans of the political and economic establishment that AIM in many ways represents. That distrust is taking root on social media platforms that are changing the rules of public policy, conflating serious issue discussions into 140 character headlines that sometimes overshadow the personal relationships that have always been AIM's stock and trade. Senator David Perdue of Georgia wrote recently, the main pendulum in American politics is no longer swinging from left to right, it's swinging between insiders and outsiders. This dangerous power vacuum has fueled frustration and created an entirely new breed of disenfranchised voters who are fed up with the status quo. These are real people, their anger is palpable, and they're not going away anytime soon. The political discourse in Massachusetts is certainly more civil than in Washington, D.C. Witness a bipartisan collaboration between Republican Charlie Baker and Democrat Marty Walsh in wooing GE, but no less challenging for employers. While the governor and House Speaker fortunately understand the symbiotic relationship between jobs and prosperity, an increasingly vocal population of advocates relentlessly cast employers as the arch villains of income inequality in America. And the business community itself is changing as influential employers wade into social issues they once studiously avoided. Driven by highly skilled millennial employees closely attuned to the values of their employers, companies are embracing a wider view of the matters that define their best interests while seeking to make clear not just what they are against, but what they are for. So how does an established and successful employer association like AIM navigate this increasingly uncertain political environment, as well as the new breed of disenfranchised voters invoked by Senator Perdue? How does a group of busy employers, without the time to march in the streets to voice our opinions, ensure that the positive message of the blueprint for the next century becomes a serious part of the debate about our economic future. As a pendulum of power swings outward from Washington and Boston, part of the answer must be stepped up involvement by employers with the political system in their own hometowns. Call it entrepreneurial populism. Those of us who risk everything to employ our neighbors in Boston, Worcester, Springfield, more than 300 other communities in Massachusetts, must tell our stories to the representatives, senators, and members of Congress in whose district we operate. The late House Speaker Tip O'Neill's maxim that all politics is local has never been truer than it is today. And if all politics is local, the employer community represents a sleeping giant with enormous potential to drive sound public policy from the bottom up. Okay, I know that we all have day jobs running businesses in a sometimes confounding economy. But inviting your state representative or state senator or congressperson to tour your plant or office or by demonstrating your new technology for a cabinet secretary or even by donating to the campaign of a candidate who represents your values as an employer ensures that your voice will be heard on key issues such as health care costs, energy, and workforce training. AIM stands ready to help any employer looking to interact with elected officials. The association has set up scores of plant tours and issue briefings over the years that have allowed employers and their workers to speak directly to members of the legislature. And you may be sure that AIM will continue to wear out the carpets of the State House on your behalf while adapting its tactics to a 24-7, hashtag happy, Instagram-driven political climate. I close with two pieces of political wisdom to underscore the need for employer activism. 
First, Winston Churchill famously said that democracy is an awful way to run a country, but it's the best system that we have. At the same time, an anonymous Chinese proverb reminds us that unless we change direction, we are likely to end up where we're headed. Let's make sure that we in Massachusetts are headed in the right direction. Thank you.